Last week we left the normal and accepting openings behind us, and we began with analyzing the orangutan, where White placed B4 as his first move. I will not try to convince you that this is a glorious opening, but please keep in mind that it actually isn't especially bad. According to me, this opening is perfect to use in blitz or rapid chess. You can use it in games where you have more time, but it isn't recommended since the opponent will then have an easier time to exploit the opening's weaknesses. I thought that we today would take a look at one of the most natural continuations in this position, namely pawn to e5. This will be the far most popular move you'll ever play against, since it directly threatens the b4 pawn. But remember that even though your opponent uses this move, it doesn't mean that he knows theory. It's often so that not only the first move, but the first couple of moves might be played accordingly to theory. This is so since they are obvious. But after a while, black begins to stray from the right road and begins making mistakes. But if you want to become a good chess player, you should never count on luck. Always count on that the opponent knows the best moves. And if he doesn't, see it as a bonus. Many mean that b4 is a bad move since it doesn't take the control over the center or opens up for the pe white pieces. But that is actually not quite true because it opens up for the bishop, which after bishop b2 takes control of not only the center but the board in general. Some mean that black shouldn't take on b4 and the most popular move is actually d6. If knight c6 would be used to protect the e5 pawn, white should play b5 thus forcing it to leave the pawn unprotected. After d6 follows e3, knight f6, c4, bishop e7, knight f3, castle kingside, bishop e2, and b6. White is all right and does even have a small advantage. This variation is important to know, but you won't need to use it often. Instead, count on playing against bishop takes b4, white takes on e5. Often, but not always, black notices that the g7 pawn is hanging, and if he doesn't protect it, he'll lose a rook. The few times that black doesn't notice this, black plays something in style like knight c6 or d6 in order to threaten the bishop, but often black notices this threat and plays knight f6. The variation continues with knight f3, castle kingside, and c4. This move might seem strange, but the plan is to cover some of the center, before black takes it all. Now follows knight c6, bishop b2, d5, e3, and rook e8. The castle is not only important for the reasons to get the king to safety, even more important is that a ca after a castle, the d2 pawn is able to move. This was not possible before, because the b4 bishop pinned it. Now follows bishop e2, bishop g4, c takes d5, knight takes d5, and castle kingside. White has his castle, and now we can begin to participate in the fight wholeheartedly. Even though it grieves me to say, black is the one with advantage here. It's not decisive, but black is better. Now we thank for me, and next week I'll see you again, and then we'll continue analyzing this move. See you then.